Greetings, and welcome to the latest installment of the Centaurus Knowledge Series. Today, we'll be discussing the topic using Python with Power BI. Our agenda today, after some introductions, we'll be having a discussion of Python and Power BI that will include Python Basics, configuring Power BI Desktop, using Python for data, Python visualizations, and transforming data. Our presenter will be doing some demos. And then when we're done, we'll cover some additional resources and a quick Centurus overview, but make sure you stick around for the aforementioned uh, Q&A should we have any residual questions. Introductions, I'm pleased to be joined today by my colleague, Mr. Patrick Powers. Patrick has 20 years of experience in data science, business intelligence, and data analytics. He's a Tableau certified associate and a Cognos and Power BI expert whose product expertise goes back to version six. He's also versed in Actuate, Hyperion, and business objects. And his certifications include multiple programming languages, including Java and C++, as well as Python, and database certification in Microsoft SQL Server. My name is Michael Weinhauer. I'm a director here at Centurus. Among my responsibilities, I have the pleasure of hosting our Knowledge Series events. As usual, we like to put our finger on the pulse of our audience, so I've got a couple polls here for you. Today's first question is, what is your preferred scripting language? To select one, Python, R, something else, or you don't use a scripting language. And I'll close this out and share it. So Python, 38%. Split 10% between R and others, and half of you don't use the scripting language. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. And Python's a good way to get started uh, with scripting, and Patrick will show you a great way to get started with Power BI. So this should be very educational for you folks. And the second poll we have is, do you create your own advanced queries with M? Please select one, yes or no. For those of you who don't know, you'll obviously answer no. Uh, M is the proprietary Microsoft language for that Power BI, Power Query uses to execute queries. I'll go ahead and close that out, share it back. So about a quarter of you do so and about three quarters no. It's probably about what I'd expect. Most people don't mess around with it, but there's some people there that are fairly steeped in M. So there you have it. Hopefully that's uh, interesting to you all. Thank you for sharing your um, your experiences and your insights here. We always love getting a finger on the pulse of the audience. And with that, I'm going to hand the floor over to Patrick. Patrick, take it away. Ta-da, it's me time. Welcome, everybody. So we today are going to talk about Python and Power BI, as Mike said. Also, Mike, I have a lot to go over today. We don't want to have the issue we had last time. So please make sure you tell me to shut up so... In case I'm not watching the clock closely enough, I want to show you guys everything, but unfortunately, we never have enough time for everything. So I do need Mike to make sure that you have enough time for the remaining end stuff today. So just tell me to shut up. I mean, I hear it at home all the time. I'm used to being told to shut up. No, Let's, start with... <laughs> <I'll prod you. laughs> Let's start with a simple question. What is Python? Well... It's an interpreted, interactive, object-oriented programming language. Technically, it's a scripting language, but hey, we'll call it a programming language for the purpose of this. Very easy to use, and that's why it's got so much love from people. It is so simple and easy to use. It, it's just so gosh darn logical. I mean, it really is, not to mention the fact that you can port it to so many different things. You can port it out to Windows, to Linux, to Mac OS, and it's extensible. You can extend it with C and C++. Now, here's your useless piece of trivia for the day. No, it was not named after a snake. It was actually named after Monty Python's Flying Circus. And if you don't know who that is, well, you, you've lived a very sheltered life, and, you know, I, I feel bad for you in a way. But when I say it's easy to learn, look, how easy is this? Wow, if I can type today, ta-da, you just learned Python, right? I mean, it really is that easy, gang. So why use it with Power BI? 
because it is so easy to learn, because it is easy to create these scripts, it can help you with things like automation, creating visuals, even machine learning modules. Most people are probably going to use it to create visuals. Same thing goes with R. A lot of people who use these kinds of scripting languages primarily for that visualization language, but using Python gives you access to visualizations that may not already be inside of Power BI. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that today, and I'm gonna show you here on a slide in a second, but I'm gonna show you an actual example of something that's not there, not in there. In addition to that, when you use it with Power Query, you can use it for data cleansing, data shaping, predictions, clustering. And this is what Mike was getting at with the poll. Instead of writing M code, you can do things in scripts and combine multiple steps from Power Query into a single Python script. How exciting is that? All right, look, you know how hard it is to make these things exciting, people? Woo! Ah, some basic stuff. You do have to have a base installation of Python installed. Go figure. Most importantly, there are two primary packages that get used. Pandas, which is for data manipulation and analysis, and matplotlib, which is just fun to say, matplotlib. This is the plotting library. This is where we're going to do visualizations from it's an object-oriented api lets us do things like taking to kinter wx python gtk plus etc once it's installed we have to configure power bi and i'm going to show you that in a moment where you do that and we can use python to create data and that can be either hard-coded or I can connect to a database, okay? And, and again, I'm gonna show you these in the, in the demos. Amanda, thank you very much. Amanda asked her, not a question, but a comment saying, I'm the most energetic teacher ever. You know, you should see me outside of class. I'm, I'm very much an Eeyore outside of class, all right? <laughs> Plus it's also, I'm on the East Coast. It's later for me. I'm ready to call it a day. We create visuals with pandas and matplotlib here's a beautiful line look at how beautiful that is matplotlib is an open source library so we can have static animated and even interactive visualizations things that you don't get out of the box or and you're all sitting there going well i can just click get more visuals yeah a lot of those want you to pay for them don't they so oh look matplotlib open source free the magic word for so many of you why why pay for it when i can use this and write a script check these out these are three examples of visualizations that you can create with matplotlib that are not currently in power bi and these are just three small examples if you go to the matplotlib website, dozens more. Look, look at this cool image of a brain. Look at these neat things. Okay. That's where you're all going, ooh, ah. So, so much can be done. Now get back to the right window, you big dummy. There it is. In addition to that, Again, it can be used in Power Query Editor. Missing data, pivot, unpivot, column removal, row removal. Instead of having 10 different steps, one script, one script. All that's done with pandas, okay? There is a nice pandas cheat sheet, and I will actually share that link with you all. Ah. Boop, boop. I will share this into the chat window with everybody. 
So here's a great cheat sheet for pandas. It's a PDF, you can print it out, but look at everything that you can do here. These are all data manipulations that you could do in a single script. Melting, pivoting, concat, drop columns, rename columns, all of this. Why would you wanna do this externally or in a script versus internally? You can combine all this, you can do more testing with it, you can see the results of all these things at once. Just makes it nice and easy and portable. Portability is, is key here. Time for the demos. Time to see this in action. Ooh, ah. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at configuring Power BI, creating data, how to build a viz, and how to transform data. I'm gonna show you all four of those. Okay. So let's do it to it. Here's my blank Power BI desktop. After doing an installation of Python, okay, and that's key, you do have to have an installation of Python. There has to be one ready to go. Where did my stupid thing go? The other thing is you do have to have it installed. And when you do the installation, I would strongly encourage you to make sure you add it to the path. There is an option when you're doing the install. Let's see if I can get that show up here on the screen there's an install there's an option when you're doing the install to add python to the path okay? if you have python installed it will prompt you and say hey do you want to customize do you want to change things but right here i would strongly encourage you to check that when you do your installation okay? yes i'm sure i want to cancel once it's installed once it's in your path file options and settings options well bam if it's in your path it's going to pick this up automatically you're not going to have to worry about anything okay let's look at this real quick detected python ides you can use an external environment to write and test your python code okay if installed it's going to want to use vs code and for those of you that aren't familiar there are differences there is visual studio which some of you may be familiar with there's also visual studio code which is a free download it's a great little application great little place to write things if it finds it it can pick it up and this gives you the option of copying and pasting code out to an external ID, testing it, making sure it runs. I can run this without debugging. Oh, look, there's all my stuff. It ran. There's my code. Ooh, ah. And then I can just copy and paste this right into Power BI because I know it works. I know it's good. I know I have no issues. Okay. So visual state, you can all tell that I'm a developer, right? Because everything's in dark mode whenever possible. How do you not live in dark mode, people? Once this is set up, you're done. You're good to go. That's all there is to it. So let's see how to use Python as a data source. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get data. I'm going to go to other Python script. Now, I will say this. Please understand, I am not here to teach you Python. I'm here to show you how to do it in Power BI. Okay. <laughs> so, Python direct questions, please. I, I just, unfortunately, I can't answer those. I'm here to show you uh, how to use it in here, okay? Now, I'm trying to see if I can get a quick answer to the question that just came in. Uh, Power BI, so this is to June's question. June's question. Python runtime supported in Power BI is 2.7.15, and 
and 3.71 and later. Okay. So June again in the Python 2, it's 2.7.15. Python 3, it's 3.71. I'm using 3.9 today. Okay. All right. So I'm going to connect. And I am just going to copy and paste a script I already have written. And here you go. I'm importing pandas, so I'm importing my library. I'm creating a matrix called data of name and age. I'm turning that into columns, name and age, using the pandas data frame. And then that print statement is crucial. If you don't put a print statement in there, you won't see the table. Trust me, I found that out the hard way. But that's it, four lines. I get my navigator. Oh, look, there's my data table. Now that data table name is completely arbitrary. I could have called this user info. I could have called it whatever I want. And come on. Uh oh. Hey, come on. There we go. I sacrificed everything as needed. And now I have ta da! I just built my own table using a script. All right, that's fine and dandy. But what if I've got a database I want to connect to? Well, I'm glad you asked. You didn't, but you know. Uh. Ah, other Python script. And this time I am going to connect to a cloud-based Azure server. To do that, I'm going to use a different library. I'm going to use PyODBC as well as pandas and i'm just building a connection string telling it what kind of driver what the database name is and yes you can see my user id and my password those can actually be hidden you can pass through PyODBC single sign-on information things like that you just got to read a bunch of documentation passing that connection string and then there's my SQL query right here. Now, in this case, I'm doing a select star. The advantage of doing something like this and doing it in a script is when you have those, those just complex types of SQL queries, you know, it's, it's the folks who use Cognos and write SQL in Cognos all the time because they just can't get what they need directly from a model. Same thing here. Okay. Hey, I've got 10,000 tables in my data warehouse. I already know which ones I need. I already know which ones. I have a query already written to get me what I need. Great. Copy and paste it in here. Do not reinvent the wheel. Okay. One of the signs of a good developer is laziness. And that's laziness by copying and pasting, using existing code, et cetera. So here we go. Once again, note my print statement. I got to have my print statement. And look at that. Neat. Ta da. Pretty cool, huh? So I can load. And there's my SQL query. Now, if I want to use this, I'm going to change that real quick. I do have to manually build a join in this case only because there are two different names, so it did not pick the join up automatically. So I've got to go ahead and do that on my own. 
now that I've got my data in there, now I can use Python to go ahead and create visualizations. Okay. I can use Python to create visualizations. So let's go back to our report view. I'm going to start a new page. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a Python visual to my canvas. It's going to ask me, hey, do you want to enable scripts? Be careful. If you're copying and paste this, it could be from a bad people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to resize that. And note that window down below. When you're using Python, your script editor appears down below and drag fields into the values area to start scripting. Until there is something here, this box is dead. You don't have to use everything you put in here, but you have to put something in here. So I'm going to add salesperson name and sales amount. Okay, just two things. Okay. Once I do that, there's some code that's automatically generated. Okay. Notice it's calling pandas, and it's passing those two fields in a data frame. It's also doing a drop duplicates function. From here, I add my own code. So let's see what we can do with good old matplotlib. Told you it's fun to say. Three lines of code. I'm importing the library. I'm doing a plot. And on that plot, I'm saying I want it to be a bar. I want salesperson on the X, I want sales amount on the Y, and that very last thing is the plot show. To see this, I need to run my script. Okay, I'm gonna click that run script. Voila, look at that. I know, so exciting. Now, I could clean this up, and I could clean this up either using the formatting tab or in my script itself. Okay? I could do it in either one. I can also change the aggregation. So if I wanted to say, hey, show me an average, don't summarize it, so I can see multiple values, et cetera. So I still have control over it. Okay. Kirsten, I'm going to show you a demo in a second with data that is in the script, or, or not, or sorry, not in this class, but or not in this webinar. But yes, I could have gotten my data any other way. So the data portion of this and the, the visualization portion of this totally separate you don't have to create your data i could have just had a regular database connection a, a xls connection and still use this script okay so the question was is can you do this with data not imported absolutely they are independent things okay all right so let's look at one a little more exciting checking my time i'm doing good uh, you know what I'm in the mood for? I'm in the mood for a good pie. Mmm. Everybody likes pie. Pie is like the Eagles. I don't care what kind of music you like, but everybody likes at least one Eagle song. Same thing with pie. There's pie for everybody. So again, I dropped a Python visualization on here resized it to fit the screen i have to bring something over to values so i'm going to do the same data i just did so you can see the same thing in a different way okay. hong has asked when i bring it in does it consider it to be import mode or direct query mode it 
considers it to be import mode. So these are both imported, which means that I can manipulate them in Power Query Editor. Okay. They are import mode. All right. So I'm going to copy another script because I'm lazy. Now this one, look at that. Like, like, what, eight lines of code. But look at all the things we're doing here. I'm importing matplotlib again. I'm setting some variables. I'm creating a variable. Okay. I'm creating a, a second one for the sizes and I'm defining some colors. These could be hex values. I just picked names so you could see what I was doing. And I'm creating a variable for my explosion. Explosions? Yeah, I got to make this exciting somehow. I want my axis to be equal. And once again, this is the equivalent of a print statement. My plot show. All right. And I'm going to hit that, that run button. Do, do, do. Who's excited? Somebody's got to be excited. Boop. Yes, it will regularly prompt you to re-enable. That is the one thing I found that kind of makes me just go, grr. But look at that. Look at my fancy pie with shadows, with percentages, with labels. Okay. Neat. And it really didn't take much in terms of scripting. Okay. Those percentages, by the way, that's right here. That's part of my, my pi uh, parameters, things I'm passing. Same thing with the shadow, same thing with the angle. One more question. Hong asked if there's performance issues. I personally have not noticed any performance difference between these two. I think that that's going to depend upon the complexity of your script, the complexity of your environment, et cetera, because you are passing this to the local OS to call Python. Now, I'm running on an eight core with 64 gig of physical memory off of an SSD drive. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I got I got the performance on my side, so I've not noticed any performance difference. But that's not to say that you might not. I don't want to I don't want to really put myself out there on that. There was a comment made to me that um, about machine learning and AI. That is one of the other big advantages to using data in this fashion. By the way, okay, being able to load data from Python from a database or anything else getting it through a machine learning script and then bringing it in, that's where we see a big advantage. Okay. Well, I have mentioned that, hey, you can also copy and paste existing scripts and you can do things that don't exist. Let me put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to add another Python. Now watch this. This is going to be kind of interesting. A minute ago, I said you don't have to use everything you put into values. So I'm just going to throw name into values, which gives me my Python window. Okay. Do, 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 do. 17 different windows open. Which one do I want? I want that one. That one. And I want this one. This is from Matplotlib. Here is existing code. Okay, it's a sample code. I'm literally going to copy it from matplotlib. And I'm going to drop it in. Okay, just dropped it in. This one is creating its own data set. Okay, so I've got a variable called x with these, with these pieces of, of data, y, these pieces of data 
creating a, a function called r, which is the square root, creating my, my sine of r. Nowhere in here am I using name. Well, bam. All right, come on. Somebody had to have been impressed with that. <laughs> All right. So completely created the data in the script. Completely did everything in the script. And I end up with that. Think about it. If you have existing scripts, if you have existing visualizations, and they have the call to the data already in them, well, bam. I think that's kind of nifty. And I could I could copy other ones, too, if I really wanted to. Okay? If I wanted to copy something else from here, say, look, what about this fancy filled curve? Okay. Boopity boopity boop. I think I have to copy the whole thing. Now I'm going off script here for a minute, which always makes Mike nervous. But you got you got to live dangerously, right, gang? Do 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 do. I don't know if that's going to work with that. Nope. So I need that bottom piece too. That right there. Nope. All right, so that one does not work. I don't have an X defined. I'd have to play with this script and see what's going on. But, hey, that one worked beautifully. And I just copied and pasted it. Now, here's where I would use my external IDE. Because I could copy all of this out to my external IDE, out to VS Code. And I could sit here. And I could test this. Okay? I could test this and see what I'm missing and what's not right. Could be that this particular library is not supported. It does not support all libraries. There is a list on Microsoft's site of what libraries are supported. So it could just be something as simple as, hey, doesn't support NumPy. Okay? NumPy. But come on, numpy is more fun. Let's take a look at the last part of this. Python and Power Query Editor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use do, 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 an Excel workbook. Please be in the right folder. Ah, no, nope, that would just been logical. Do, 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 do. I'm going to get to my folder here. So here I've got an XLS file. Okay. And if you'd like to see this XLS file, because I know you do, it is in some serious need of cleansing. It is not something that could be used right away. Let's take a look and see what I mean by that. So here it is. That's one tab. That's not the useful tab. It's nothing like having three different resolutions on three different monitors when you're trying to do this. Look at that. That needs cleansing before I can use it in Power BI, right? So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to bring in the Equipment by Suppliers tab. And I'm going to go into Power Query Editor. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some uh, some manual stuff real quick here. I'm going to get rid of the promoted headers and change type steps. Okay. And I want to go ahead and I'm going to manually get rid of these two columns. Now, I could easily put this into my script too. There is a pandas for remove columns. But this is just for the sake of time. So here it is. Here is my data as it is imported. And I'm going to clean up multiple steps using a script. So I'm going to go to transform, the run a Python script. Do, 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 do. Once again, I'm importing pandas. I'm defining my data set. I'm getting rid of, I'm dropping the first two rows. 
and I'm going to backfill this column. So I'm combining multiple steps into a single script. And again, I could also add a melt step to unpivot this. I could add a remove columns to have gotten rid of columns 15 and 16, all of that. So instead of having 10 different things over here, one script. Once again, it's prompting me about safety levels. There it is. My first two rows are deleted. And it backfilled my one column. One script. One script. Ta-da! This, why would you want to do this? This can help you avoid having to write M. Okay. It can help you avoid writing M because if you look at the M for this, you see right there, run Python script. So instead of trying to learn how to parse M, you're parsing a language you already know. Makes it easier to maintain, makes it easier to troubleshoot. Okay. So you're doing something you already know and you're already familiar with. M, M is not an easy language to learn. Not that Python's easy, but there's a lot more people out there being taught Python in school. You know, there's kids getting taught Python at the grade school level these days. So imagine you get somebody in who's, yeah, I just spent the last four years writing Python code in school. Great. Go to town. That's a lot easier than trying to get somebody to learn how to use M. Okay. So I did go nice and quick to make, to make Mike happy. We actually have 20 whole minutes for you, for you, Mike. I will answer one more question. Larissa, I've never done a side-by-side -side test, but I, again, I would have to take into consideration the fact that it is calling the OS, it's calling out to Python on the computer, on the local machine. I, I think, again, it would have to be a, a complexity thing. Those, That's a very fair question, and I would have to write a, a script of equal complexity to test them side by side. But machine performance and everything else is going to be a factor. Doing this on a 4 gig i3 off of an old SATA drive is going to be a lot different than doing it on an eight core i7 with 64 gig of memory and an SSD, right? Because we're making a call out to Python installed on the machine. All right. And I think actually I answered pretty much all the questions. I, I think you did. Yeah. I, I couldn't follow all of them, but I would have to figure M might have a slight advantage being internal to. Uh, Power BI versus the call out to Python, but yeah, I'm sure your mileage may vary. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I don't want to necessarily go out on a limb and give a, a hard answer there because right, we can't. Yeah, say your that. mileage is going to vary based on your machine. So I think you had a summary slide, Patrick. If you want to, um, I think I do actually. A few minutes today. Why don't you jump over there and? Um, I do. I had that ready in reserve. So here it is. Here's the summary. Everything I just said. Why use Power BI in Python? The biggest one, hands down, as far as I'm concerned, is access to reusing existing code. Okay. You know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up one of the questions that just came through from Emily. We use TM1Py to connect to TM1 cubes. In theory without knowing a whole lot more about it, assuming that you have a script, you would be able to easily copy and paste that code right into Power BI. Now, I personally am not familiar with any other connectors. You know, there's a lot of different libraries, a lot of different drivers out there. I'm using PyODBC, but gosh, there are a lot of different, uh, different libraries. 
you know, your best place is to go to the Python site where there's all sorts of Python documentation, you know, python.org. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, right? Python.org. And here you can see all sorts of different libraries, everything else that's out there. But that is a perfect example, Emily. So thank you for that question because I'm able to use it. You can reuse that code. And same thing goes with more visualizations. You just saw one in matplotlib that's not available elsewhere. Greater flexibility from tricky sources. Again, Emily's example of TM1Pi is a perfect example of that. Not having to write M. Hey, I've got a new employee who knows Python and knows how to do all sorts of fancy things in Python. Python, great. Don't have to learn M, can do data cleansing that way. Okay. Pre-existing scripts, everything's out there. There are so many samples out there in the Python libraries in the Python world. Okay. So many. It's a wonderful community. It's a wonderful thing. So I'm Olga, Olga asked a question about Python visuals. Um, do you need a Power BI Pro license for the service? I'm going to defer that one. And Bob, if you want to answer that one, if you happen to know, uh, I do know they are, are needed for R, but I'm not sure. I'm focusing just on desktop for right now. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to defer that question. And Mike, I think that's it for me. 15 Great, minutes thanks. left for you. Good. Keep an eye on that question pane in case some more uh, roll in. We can pick them up at the end. Uh, thanks for a great presentation, Patrick. Um, along those lines, if you want to learn more, we have a great self-paced class that you can sign up for, Power BI in Python, where you can leverage the power of Python scripts within the Power BI desktop environment. In the class, you'll learn how to create and access data for visualizations and transform data for through Power Query using Python. It's a half-day course available on demand or can be taught in private groups. Along those lines, we offer a complete spectrum of BI training. If you want to go to the next slide, Patrick, in the three major platforms we support, Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, and IBM Cognos, we're ideal for organizations that are running multiple platforms or those moving from one to another. Patrick, as an example, is very facile in all three of those platforms, and we offer all of the different Standard modalities, tailored group sessions, small group mentoring, instructor-led online courses, and self-paced e-learning. And we can mix and match those to optimize for your organization. Got some great additional resources. Again, out on centurus.com. We have hundreds of free resources on the website, and we've been committed to sharing our BI expertise for over a decade. You can also see recordings of Patrick's last two webinars, Power BI Builder and Paginated Reports and Power BI Data Cleansing and Power BI and Power Query Editor. So we got a bunch of Power BI uh, webinars and blogs out there, as well as uh, Tableau and Cognos and all things business analytics. So go ahead and check that out. And again, bookmark it while you're there. Upcoming event, we've got two for you. Uh, first of all, what's new in Cognos 11.2.1 with uh, IBM's uh, product manager, Rachel Sue. That's coming up on the 28th of October at the usual time you can register over on centurus.com at events and then we're doing a centurus analytics connector presentation and demonstration where you can easily connect power bi and tableau to cognos data and leverage your single source of the truth and govern data real quickly about centurus we concentrate our expertise solely on business intelligence with a depth of knowledge across the entire bi stack and our clients know us for providing clarity from the chaos of complex business requirements, disparate data sources, and constantly moving targets and changing regulatory environments. We've made a name for ourselves because of our strength at bridging the gap between IT and business users. We deliver solutions that give you access to reliable, analysis-ready data across the organization, so you can quickly and easily get answers at the point of impact in the form of the decisions you make and the actions you take. Our consultants are leading experts in the field of analytics with years of pragmatic real-world expertise and experience advancing the state of the art. We're so confident in our team and our methodology that we back our projects with a 100% money-back guarantee that is unique in the industry. 
And we've been doing this for quite a while. We've been focused exclusively on business analytics for over 20 years now. We've worked across the spectrum from Fortune 500 down to the mid-market and have solved business problems across many industries and functional areas, including the Office of Finance, Sales and Marketing, Manufacturing, Operations, HR, and IT. Our team prides itself in being both large enough to meet all of your business analytics needs, yet small enough to provide personalized attention. If you would like to join the Centurus team, we are hiring talented and experienced professionals. You can see the list there. If you want to look at the job descriptions, head on over to the link in the slide you see here and or send your resume to jobs at centurus.com. With that, we have a couple minutes left here. Actually, we've got a lot of time left. Um, did any new questions pop up there in the question panel that you want to answer, Patrick? They did not. Um, <laughs> I stunned everybody into silence again. You know, it's just because I answer everything so well during the presentations, you don't have any questions afterwards. Exactly. And, and you know, I was clear. so worried about the time that I went quicker, and now we end up with extra time. You just can't win, can you? Well, nobody ever complains about getting a few minutes back in their day. So if you want to advance to the last slide then. Hey, um, I will the, I will interject something real quick. I know you didn't have it on the upcoming events, but just as kind of a little sneak preview, for those of you who are, are scripting people, there may be one of these for R coming up soon. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I thought I saw that somewhere, and I, I, but I didn't want to say it without knowing it definitively. But yeah, especially when we talk about extending uh, tools like Power BI or Tableau um, or any tool really with, with R, that's really where those statistical packages come into play. So that'll be a really interesting webinar. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. Oh, and, and I forgot at the beginning of the webinar, that thanks for jarring my memory there, that we do record all of these webinars and we will post the recording along with the deck and uh, a questions log if that's appropriate. I think we answered everything today, but thanks for reminding me about that. Um, Thank you, Patrick, for a, a great presentation as always. And thanks to all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Uh, thanks for your time. And please do reach out to us uh, via the info at centurus.com email, or if you actually still use a phone, uh, you can call us. Uh, but we'd love to hear about any of your business analytics needs. And lacking that, we will look forward to seeing you on the next Centurus Knowledge Series event. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye now.